All right, so in this tutorial, we're gonna take a look at how to create respawn points so that when you hit an enemy or fall to your death in the water, you are respawned to a checkpoint. For this tutorial, you're going to need a player character who's equipped with the ability to move around, as well as some sort of a collider and a rigid body. You're also gonna need something to use as a checkpoint. For mine, I've just got a wooden plank sprite, and then I've just added two rectangles to it, a green one and a red one, to indicate when you've passed the flag. We're gonna start off with some scripts. So let's begin by creating a brand new C Sharp script, and we'll call this one Player Respawn. Now this script is actually going to go on our player. So you can go ahead and hit add component. And if you start typing player respawn, you'll find it there. At that point, we can go ahead and edit the script. All right, so there's just a couple of lines we're gonna wanna put in here. First of all, up at the top below our class, we're gonna declare a variable. Let's make this one a public vector three. We're gonna call this respawn point. Right now we're gonna get rid of our start and update method and we're gonna make a new method here. This is gonna be a public void called respawn now. And to do that, we're just gonna type in transform.position and then set the position to be equal to, and in this case, we'll just set it equal to the respawn point. All right, so you'll notice now that our script has this X, Y, and Z value. And say I just wanted this to be my respawn point here, which is roughly at a 35 on the X and minus two and a half on the Y. So I could put those values in here. And I've now set his respawn point to where he currently is. The only thing is we need to trigger the respawn to actually be called. To do this, I'm gonna make falling in this water here um, be my trigger. To do that, I'm gonna just create an empty game object. I'm gonna call this one death. I'll move death down into the water and I'm just gonna add a collider. In my case, I like to work with a box collider, 2D. I'll open that up and click edit. And I just wanna make it so that it's kind of below the water here. So that if I fall in and touch this water, um, my player will recognize that he's hit something. Now to do that, we're gonna use a tag here. So I'm gonna create click on the tag where it says untagged, go down to the bottom. I have death already added, but you'll wanna click add tag, hit the plus button and type in death or whatever you'd like to call your tag. You then have to go back to your object, click on tag and select that new tag. All right, I now have a death object that my player can interact with in order to find out that he is in fact dead. Now let's pop back into our respawn script for a moment. Now we need to make it so that our player can actually detect his own death. To do this, we're gonna create another method and this one is gonna be an on collision enter 2D. Now, if you select that here in Visual Studio and hit enter, it will automatically provide you with all the syntax. So I'm gonna make an if statement here because we wanna to check to see if the collision game object that we just hit has a tag that is equal to death. We'll then add our curly brackets and then all we wanna do at this point is if we touch an object called death, we want to call our respawn now script and we do that by typing in respawn now. Now, some of you may be wondering, why are we bothering to have two methods here that essentially are kind of doing the same thing? Why not just write the new transform position right here in the on collision method? Well, you could do that and it would totally work, but we want this to be more multi-purpose and not just to work when we hit a death point like the water, but also to work with say a attack damage script where when our health gets to zero, we respawn. And I'll show how to do that later in the tutorial. Now for the moment, our flag is kind of irrelevant, but I should now be able to walk up and when I fall into the ground, my player automatically respawns to the respawn point that I set earlier. All right, that's working nicely. Let's get our checkpoint set up next. And then at the end, I'll show how to apply this to other scripts like if you die in combat. All right, so first let's create a new C Sharp script. And let's call this one checkpoint. I'm gonna add the checkpoint script to my checkpoint game object. So I'll click add component, type in checkpoint, and there it is. Let's open that script up. All right, so this checkpoint script essentially just needs to detect when the player has passed it and then send a message to the player that changes his respawn point. So to do that, we're gonna start up here under our class and we first of all need to make a reference to the player respawn script so that we can talk to it. So this one will be a private reference to player respawn and let's just call it player respawn with a lowercase p. Let's go into our start method and we can tell it what player respawn will equal. 
So we'll say player respawn is equal, and it's gonna do a look now on the game object, and we're gonna try to find a game object called player. We then put a dot, and once it finds the player, we want it to look specifically for the component on our player called player respawn. We're not gonna need the update method here. In fact, all we're gonna need is a on trigger enter 2D. So in this case, if the collision dot game object dot name is equal to player. And all we want to do here is we'll now talk to player respawn. And we want to change that vector three. So if we go into our player respawn that we called respawn point. So we type in player respawn to get the script. Then we go respawn point is equal to and we just want to set it equal to the location of our checkpoint. So in that case, we'll just say transform.position. At this point, if you want to get a little fancy and have your flags change, I'll also show how to do that. I'm just here going to make a public game object reference to a green flag and a public reference to our red flag. And all we simply want to do is when the player touches us, we want to turn off the red flag and turn on the green one. So I'll go red flag dot set active false and green flag dot set active true. Just a couple little things to do here now. So first of all, we just need to actually make sure that our flag knows or our checkpoint knows what the flags are. So I'm going to grab my green flag game object drag it into that green flag box, and do the same with my red flag. The one other thing I need to do is make sure that there's actually a trigger on my checkpoint. So we'll add a component, and we're going to add another box collider 2D. I'm going to click is trigger. Remember, making something a trigger makes it so the player can pass through it and not run into it. So I'm actually just, as we're playing here, going to click on my player game object, and I'm going to watch his respawn point here to see if it changes when I touch my flag. Bingo. We had a nice change there, so now when I fall into the water, I respawn back to the flag. Excellent. Now, as a bonus feature here, we're just going to look at how to have this exact same functionality, but happen when you take damage. All right, so for the sake of our testing, I've added in this ferocious looking object here, which is called enemy. And essentially, all the enemy is is just an empty game object that I am adding a box collider to so that my player can detect when he hits it, and I've tagged my enemy as enemy. And all that we're going to do here now is just on my player, I've quickly added a health test script. So essentially my player starts with three health, and anytime he collides with an object that is tagged as an enemy, his health goes down by one. Now at the moment, if my health gets to zero or lower, I just destroy the player's game object. But that's what we're going to change here. Instead, we want to respawn the player. So. Let's head up to the top here. And first of all, we need to actually talk to the respawn script. So once again, we're going to create a private player respawn. And we'll call this one player respawn. Now for that, we could make this one a public one, so we could just drag the script into the box. But I prefer to use a better practice um, in general, which is just to use our start method as a way to have the, de the script detect the um, script it wants to talk to for itself. It's a tiny bit more work, but it's good practice um, because it will save you time and errors in the future. So now we're just going to tell our script that player respawn is equal to, and we're just going to do a game object find and have it look for an object called player. And once we've found the player, we'll look for hit the component called player respawn. Don't forget your brackets there. All right, at this point, instead of destroying the object when our health gets to zero, instead, we're going to talk to the player respawn script. We'll hit a dot here because we want to go inside that script. And what we want to do in our player respawn script is tell it to respawn now. We, back in our health script, we'll talk to re, player respawn and we're going to call the method respawn now. One quick note on my flag at the moment, I forgot to turn the green flag off at the beginning. So let's do that so it starts as red. Now when I get into the game, you'll notice that I have three health and I have whatever respawn point I have set for myself in the past. You can make it anything. Um, and now when I go to my checkpoint, the flag changes green, my respawn point gets set. And when I bump into my enemy, you'll notice my health is going down each time. And when I get to zero, it respawns me back to my checkpoint. All right, that should do it for today. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you have, please be sure to click like or subscribe to the channel. 
Till next time, this is Matt with Night Run Studio. Cheers. <laughs>